This is the UK, and here in the North Ayrshire region, southwest of Glasgow, is a small town named Kilburnie. A long time ago, I lived here with my family, but my granddad was the only one who remembered what Kilburnie used to be like, long before we were born. Granddad used to tell us stories about a very big, very important factory called Glengarnock Steelworks that used to operate next to Kilburnie Loch. It closed down a long time ago and was built over, so even though this place was so important to my granddad and to everybody who used to remember the steelworks, there really wasn't a lot to do there for us kids. We didn't remember the history of Glengarnock Steelworks. We had no reason to go there and so for us the place held no meaning whatsoever. But what does this mean exactly? Meanings are what transform spaces into places. First, we engage with them, and then, over time, an important emotional connection develops. In this region in particular, children were the future. There was no incentive for young people to stay and live and work here. Something had to be done. So when the Kilburnie Lockshore area was redesigned, it was decided that children, and the child within every adult, should be the focus. By combining the old traces of meaning and history with new emerging sparks of interest, new landscape meanings could be evolved and old ones rediscovered. The project was known as Glengarnock Steelworks, engaging with a playful post-industrial site, and everyone was very happy that something was finally being done. The first two positions of last semester's state space strategy are used to frame a specific design approach. These are titled Structure and Spark. Phase 1, Structure, focuses on reintroducing the sense of structure which was lost in the region following the mass industry closures. It also aims to change local perceptions of the area through three design threads. Structures of movement, structures of remediation and landscape structures. This is the current landscape, zero years along our timeline of interventions. As our narrator Jack already explained, it's pretty empty for the moment. Over the next one to two years, path structures are implemented as part of the first design threat, structures of movement. Three points of access to the site are also defined. Moving on to the second design thread, structures of remediation, a wetland area is created. A meander is also extracted from the existing River Garnick north of the site, carrying excess stormwater to be held in Kilburnie Loch. In the meantime, a disused rugby pitch already showing signs of bog habitat develops into a raised bog area by capturing rainwater over time, while the previously intended coppicing areas are properly maintained and harvested at three to five year intervals to fuel a new biomass industry. After three years, by which time the path structures are completed, areas of the existing grassland are converted into flower-rich meadows through raking and seeding, and following this, woodland areas are developed for a range of purposes, building on existing vegetation with a selection of native species. Finally, following the establishment and stabilisation of the new Garnock Meander, a residential area is constructed which revolves around the water. Once combined, the final plan takes shape. And now for phase two, SPARK, which focuses on the creation of meaningful place identities and the facilitation of three types of engagement, engagement with the non-human, engagement with traces of history, and inherent engagement. Building on the spaces created during phase one, 12 areas are defined, each with their own identity. Each takes the form of a symbolic train station, tying into the history of the site, and together they form the Lockshore Loop, a walking trail which encompasses the entirety of the new Lockshore area. Over time, the identity of each area develops and grows. Take Kilburnie, the new residential area for example, a rich fluid flooding area where humans and non-humans live in a holistic system fueled by water. Or the Rolling Mills Play Area, a safe space for community growth and engagement with the non-human in a historic location, the former steel rolling mills of Glengarnock Steelworks. And what about the family? While Ali decided to search for success elsewhere, Jack eventually decided to explore a fluid flooding lifestyle for himself, and is still living there to this day. <laughs>